Hi everyone, my name is Patrick um, and I'm the director of the Rights Evaluation Studio, an independent consultancy looking at evaluation and litigation advocacy in other complex settings. I've been working with the Digital Freedom Fund for a number of years to help develop and iterate a framework and approach to impact assessment for the digital rights field. We've made this three-part webinar series to give you an overview of the methodology which underpins the framework that we developed, the framework itself, and also how you can use and apply this framework in your own work. We hope you enjoy these webinars and I hope you find them useful. Welcome to the second webinar in our impact monitoring series. In the last webinar, we explored the methodology which underpins DFF's framework for monitoring impact. In this session, we will go over the framework in a bit more detail and I'll be introducing the different impact and outcome themes that we've used to guide our impact monitoring. We'll also talk about evidence principles um, that we're using in, in our approach to impact monitoring, as well as data and data limitations. So a couple of years ago, I worked with DFF to develop a pilot framework for monitoring impact for digital rights litigation and advocacy. This was a result of having multiple roundtables, meetings, and desk research about different approaches and the needs of different organizations. We then developed this pilot framework to, to try and uh, meet the needs that were identified through that process um, and also fill a gap in uh, where there was a lack of existing frameworks and, and tools uh, that could be applied to, to this field. So there's three parts to the pilot framework. Firstly, a thematic framework to help us organize outcomes. Secondly, a methodology for collecting outcome data and outcome statements. We covered uh, that methodology in our first webinar. Um, and thirdly, um, evidence standards, which are used to help add a layer of rigor and, and quality to the, the data that's going into the, the framework that we're using. So you remember, if you watched the first uh, webinar in the series, that the framework that we've developed is based on a methodology called outcomes harvesting, which is used to help us develop an outcome bank of outcomes statements. The idea behind the thematic framework is to provide a way for us to map these outcome statements back to these different themes to support us with analysis um, and also to structure the way we're thinking about these different outcomes um, and these outcome statements. As a result of the consultation and research process, we identified three key types of impacts that we wanted to use in our framework. The first was around law and policy changes, so looking at legislation, new policies or laws being introduced or changed or stopped, looking at international standards as well as access to justice. We then wanted to look at an impact type of social change um, and thinking about how uh, public awareness, um, the wider environment for different communities changed, as well as representation and visibility of different groups uh, being heard in court. And then finally, we wanted to look at changes within the digital rights field itself and how they were changing to respond to different uh, threats and digital rights issues that were emerging. So we looked at the, co the coordination of the field, um, the field's efforts to be able to address digital rights violations, as well as engagement between the field and different bodies and entities. So now I want to talk a little about evidence standards and what makes monitoring and evaluation uh, data and evidence uh, credible. So many uh, different uh, audiences and users of this information that you're collecting will have different uh, standards and, and criteria of what they see as credible data. So it's really important that you think about how you'll be using this information beforehand and take that into account into your uh, design of your evaluation and how you'll be collecting and using this information. Um, the most important thing to be thinking about is that the information you collect is indeed credible, um, that the, the contribution narrative that you're developing around your outcome or outcome statement is, is plausible and realistic, so it actually makes sense what you're saying you've contributed to. So not overclaiming or or uh, or not acknowledging the role of other actors in in certain changes, um, and also it's really important that it's verifiable. It's also really important to be aware um, 
of the flaws in, in your data and to be transparent about the limitations. Um, all data, no matter how it's collected or, or what methodology you use, has, has flaws or limitations. Um, so being aware of this will help you to be able to use that information in the, the safest and most appropriate way. And communicating those limitations um, can make sure that information isn't misused or misinterpreted. For the DFF framework, we developed four evidence principles to help control the quality of the outcome statements and the data that we were using. These evidence principles were inclusion and voice, so ensuring the opinion and, and voice of those referenced in the outcome statement are included. The specificity of the contribution, so making sure the, uh, the role of the organization, the litigation, the advocacy is specific enough. Triangulation, so making sure there are multiple data sources that can confirm uh, that change has happened and the contribution. And also transparency, so being clear about how the evidence was collected um, and by who, and transparency around the limitations of the evidence that has been provided. So that's the end of the second webinar, which looked at the thematic framework and evidence standards used in DFF's uh, pilot framework for impact assessment in digital rights litigation and advocacy. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, there's further information and uh, details in the uh, written framework, which you can find on DFF's website. Thanks for watching this part of the series, and you can now uh, hop over to the final part of the series, which looks at pra practical application of this framework and the methodology.